G'day guys, back with the Outer Circle, and this is the second part in the Knowing Your Transport series for Horus Heresy. This time out we're going to look at the Saw Auxilla, Imperialis Militia, and the Mechanicum's transports. Why am I putting all of these into one video when the Marines, the Legions, had their own video all themselves? Well, basically because there's a lot less options, and most of them double up. So, obviously beginning us is the Aurox Armoured Transport. As you all know, it's basically a Rhino. So, for the Sora Auxilia, it's not terrible. It's not as good as their other transport option, the Dracosan. The positive side of things, it's cheap. It can hold 10 models, and two of them can even shoot out the top. It has a decent amount of options you can upgrade it with. I think probably the multi-laser is the way to go instead of the heavy stubber if you want to actually put some firepower out. Otherwise, it's a very cheap, very weakly armoured option. But if you're using a lot of your points to, you know, fill up on heavy tanks and that kind of thing, well, maybe taking the Aurox is a great way to still mount your troops in transports and save a bit of points doing so. The problems lie with taking it for a militia list because the only people you really will take in it are your sort of grenadier squads. But the problem with those is that in order to take the weapons you want in a militia squad, well, you've actually got to spend points and upgrade them. To take the plasma guns, for example, which are quite a common sort of choice, you actually have to pay for two additional models. You don't just upgrade existing models in your 10-man unit. Now, the problem with this is the vehicle has a transport capacity of just 10. So you can't take a squad with the weapons you want in the vehicle. It's stupid, completely stupid as a choice. So because of that reason it's very hard to recommend for the Imperialis Militia. There's simply nothing worth putting in it for them. Maybe a command squad, but realistically there are probably better choices out there. The next tank is for the Solar Auxilia only, and this tank transport is the Dracosan. The Dracosan is the perfect kind of transport. You can take it with the twin linked LAS cannon in the front hull and you essentially have a Spartan transport. Not as tough of course, especially if you can get the sides and the rear, but frontally very tough vehicle. The downsides is it costs a lot of points, a lot of points, more than many actual battle tanks in the Heresy do. You're talking sort of more expensive than Sikorans in some cases especially if you choose to go for the Demolisher Cannon mounted in the front of the hull. If you choose to take the Demolisher Cannon, it dramatically cuts down the amount of troops you can put inside the vehicle, so you've really got to plan your list around that. Now on the bright side of things, infantry tersoirs in the Solar Auxilia can be split in half and you can put 10 models in the vehicle and put the other 10 on foot, so there is a little bit of flexibility to it. The reason why this isn't the best transport though is chilly down to points. I mean just three of these and the squads to go inside will fill up most of a thousand points. So it adds up very quickly. That said, the firepower output, especially with demolisher cannons, um, the sheer versatility of the vehicles, the fact they're really well armoured makes them a great transport option. Next, the termite assault drill. As with the Legionnaires, the big thing letting this down is the fact you can't take bulky models. Whilst on the one hand, yes, it's great because you can put a 12-man squad up there, so say your Imperialis Militia Grenadier squads with their plasma guns, that's great in theory, but in reality, you have to hop out of the vehicle to use them. You're not sitting inside like other transports firing out the roof with your plasma guns. Instead, you have to expose the unit. So it's a one-trick pony in that you pop up in the enemy's deployment zone or some such, hop out and start firing and then hope next turn you don't get completely deleted by the return fire. Also, if you're taking these and you say buy two or three of them, well, there's always going to be models that are left off the board when you start the game and you're going to be relying on them coming in later. That's not particularly useful to you. So the versatility is a bit hit and miss here. I think probably the best unit you could put in it would be Solar Auxilia with Flamers. 
because a 10 man squad of flamers hopping out of this could be terrifying to the enemy. Volkites? Eh, maybe. But definitely flamers. Another good option would be Solar Auxilia Valitaris. But I mean, the two best units that you could put in this. Oh, and that's Valitaris with Power Axis, by the way, not Valitaris with Volkites. The two best units you could put in this, though, are. Charonite Ogrens and Ogrens, but they're bulky models, which means they can't go in it. And that's kind of a pain in the ass, because it basically means you have to walk those units across the table to get them into combat, and yeah, that's not what you want. Not ideal at all. The next one is a dedicated transport for the Imperialist Militia, and you're looking at sort of your, mm, I guess your conscript levies in this case. And it's the currently not in production at Forge World Gorgon Assault Transport. This thing can pack a crap load of infantry into it. So that's a definite positive. Another positive, that bow, the front of it, you're pretty much not going to hurt. That thing has an involve save because it's got such a thick armoured assault prow. Downside of things, it has the firepower of a wet piece of paper. Seriously, it's, you're talking heavy stubbers, best case, some mortars up top, some heavy lasers, uh, sorry, heavy uh, flamers on the sides of it. A very, very weak vehicle for offensive firepower output, and being a super heavy, a lot of points. So, is it worth it? No, because most provenances will focus on having hordes of infantry that would use the transport, while those infantry are very tough in their own right and you're taking, say, a horde of feel-no-pain infantry, you don't put them in this vehicle. Instead, you use those points to buy some really cool tanks, some really cool ogren units, something that actually has some hitting power. Well, you throw your hoarded infantry across the board and the enemy goes, how do I deal with the 600 bodies coming at me? Well, actually, 300 you can max out at in, like, a 2,000-point game. It's ridiculous the amount of conscripts you can throw at the enemy. Now, you just go spending money on Gorgon transports that have no firepower output, realistically. You're just wasting points. You want to be taking uh, Lima and Rust tanks. You want to be taking Medusas, things like that. Uh, other super heavies like Storm Blades and Bane Blades and Storm Hammers and those kind of things. That's the downside of this. I mean, it's really cool, and if you're going entirely on fluff, which is perfectly fine and very laudable, in fact, I'm greatly for going for a fluff based force yeah it's great to have a couple of these storm across the battlefield and dump out infantry but the reality of it is they're not in production with forge world currently and well so many points for what you get now two of the provenances oh actually one of the provenances i can look a couple of extra vehicles for your uh, imperialist militia and one of them is the dimos pattern rhino which has all the same problems as the Aurochs because they're the same bloody vehicle. Yep, it's cheap, but you can't put the units you want to inside it, so it's essentially useless to you. The other vehicle it unlocks is the Land Raider Armored Proteus, which, well, finally you've got something that can transport Ogrens, you've got something that can transport 10-man squads, but of course it doesn't have an assault ramp, so yeah, it it's a really good vehicle, it's probably worth it, but at the same time, it's not perfect. It's not perfect. Everything's a bit of a compromise when it comes to the vehicle department for the Imperial Militia. Their provenances make their heavy weapon teams, their infantry fantastic, but they suffer in the transports department. They really, really need something like an Aurochs, but with an additional two infantry support slots, or transport slots. That there is Solar Auxilia and the Imperialis Militia. Solar Auxilia with just the Aurochs and the Dracosan, and the Imperial Militia with the Aurochs, the Gorgon, the Rhino, and the Land Raider. And both factions have access to the Termite. Lastly, the Mechanicum. Now, of course, the Mechanicum also have access to the Termite with all the same problems. Units that you want to put inside it, generally won't be able to go inside it. You know, you're not putting Myrmidons in this, so 
kind of useless in that regard. There's probably some cool stuff you could do with like say Siwax or um, some sort of other automata that's really light, but even a Thalax can't hop in this vehicle. So greatly limits your options. I think Skataria probably the best unit you could put in this, but yeah, again, it's it's kind of a weird one. I suppose the two main transports we should talk about are the Triaros and the Macrocarid. Now, the Triaros is a very bizarre vehicle, because on the one hand, it's as tough as a Lamb Raider, and on the other, it's about as tough as a Rhino. Well, that's, that's an exaggeration. But essentially, you have a vehicle which has not very great firepower, but is frontally very tough. Um, the shock ram on the vehicle means that in a ramming situation, this vehicle is key. There is not much you can really take this on in a ram, and it will beat a land raider probably 9 times out of 10 in a ramming competition because of that. Transport capacity is good. You can put things like Myrmidons in it. You can put your Magos in it. Downside, it doesn't have a huge amount of firepower, and it does lack armor on the sides and the rear. It's also a very long vehicle, so it's very easy for people to get those side armor facings. Tough choices when it comes to the Triaros. The Macro Carrot, on the other hand, is, for all intents and purposes, a Land Raider. It's a much nicer looking vehicle, in my opinion, than the Land Raiders of Horus Heresy and uh, 40k. And it doesn't have that same Prowl Shock Ram ability, but it can take things like Irad Cleansers. So, firepower output makes this a fantastic transport, because it's useful to you after you drop whatever unit's inside it doesn't have the transport capacity of the Triaros, which is a huge downside. It doesn't have an assault ramp either, so it definitely has its weaknesses. Would I say to take one over the other? Definitely not. I think the Macro Carrot definitely has its place, and its place is where you want more firepower from your transport, whereas the Triaros is where you want a transport that simply can just run straight at the enemy and just ram into them. Anyway, that's really all there is to say about these sort of transports. I hope that people got a sort of rough idea from this really quick overview. I mean, let's face it, there's a lot of tactics you can apply, different provenances, overlapping things like void shield arrays, using your transports to block line of sight, and all sorts of different tactics that you could go into that change the dynamics of how they work. But if you're starting a 30k army, those aren't factors for you. If you're getting into something for the first time and you're not really sure how the game plays, you want it to be simple. And that's the whole point of these sort of series, is that if you're looking at transports and you're running Imperialis Militia, you probably don't want Aurox transports, so don't spend the money on it. That's my advice to you, because it's not going to give you what you want. A Gorgon Armored Assault Transport, yeah, looks awesome, but it's a huge, expensive kit to buy. I mean, the only way you're going to get it is either buying a kit that's out of production on eBay for a fortune, or going to a recaster and paying a fair and reasonable price. But again, is that ideal for you? No, because you need to buy a crap load of infantry for your Imperialist Militia Army, so you don't really want to be spending all this money on these huge transports. Maybe you want to buy a Termite, but the problem is the Termites can't take the units you want to put in it. Again, the only exception being, I think, maybe Valataris with Power Axes, or definitely Solar Auxilia with Flamers, because 10 flamers hopping out of this, yeah, that would be terrifying. But those are exceptions to the mediocrity of the termite. The Draco Sun, great transport, a lot of money. I mean, Australian dollars, $200. I mean, that's that's a big buy-in. A solar auxiliary army can be very expensive if you're stocking up on these. Maybe if you went for Aegis Defense Lines, which are an option you can take instead of the Draco Sarn for the Solar Auxilia, instead of taking a dedicated transport, you can take an Aegis Defense Line. Maybe that's better for you, better value for money. Anyway, that's a quick overview of different transports available to the Imperialis Militia, Solar Auxilia, and the Mechanicum. As I said last time, we're not going to cover the Custodes, because essentially it's one Grav Tank and the Red October neither of which are very interesting vehicles, and we both know how good they are. Anyway, thank you all for watching the episode. On Tuesday, there'll be another war video coming. This one will be on the Primarchs, and then the third one will be looking at the Legions themselves, where they originated, what their first battles were, some of the ones I know of anyway, 
what their tactical organization was and how the crusade changed them. Anyway, thank you all for watching the episode and I'll see you all next time.